rub off the skins. Now you could take off every skin individually, but I find that it's a much easier way if you actually put them into a tea towel and gather up the corners of the tea towel like that and then rub like mad. And that actually rubs off most of the skins for you. There we go. Now, there might be a few left, but anyway, that doesn't matter. You see, right, I've got most of the skins off, pick them out, and then I'll chop those. You can use this sort of knife just to chop them fairly uh, roughly, but not in huge chunks. Otherwise, uh, it's better if you, if you chop them fairly finely, because then they'll go through the cake slightly better, and everybody will get a little piece of almond. Now, so that's the almonds chopped. So I'll take those and put them into my bowl and I'll add all the rest of my dried fruits in as well. So the two ounces of whole almonds there, uh, I'm putting in 12 ounces of raisins, 12 ounces of nice yellow sultanas, 12 ounces of currants, I've got four ounces of glassy cherries here. Now you can leave them whole if you want to, or you could cut them in half, or you could cut them in quarters. I quite li like to leave them whole, because then they're whole in the cake and you can cut, slice right through them. So I've got the fruit, the cherries, and the candied peel in so far. I'll add in my ground almonds. That's the two ounces of ground almonds going in. I'll just cover my ingredients for the almond paste while I see that tea towel there. And next I'm going to grate in the orange and lemon peel. Now, any time you're grating uh, lemon or orange rind, make sure to use, if you can at all, a stainless steel grater. And then I'm afraid it's the finest part of the grater you use as well, because if you use this wide grating here, you're likely to get right into the pith, which is actually underneath the nice, um, lovely lemon zest on the outside there. So just barely rub and turn it very quickly. Don't stay in one place for too long or you get right into that bitter part. There we are. And then you could use some sort of stiffish brush just to brush off the lemon peel and make sure you get every bit off the grater. I actually already have the lemon and orange rind grated so I'll put the rest of it in there. There we are. Let's get this out of the way, my orange and lemon. And now, next I'm going to add in a little drop of whiskey. I've got two and a half fluid ounces of whiskey here in the bottle, and I'm going to add in about half that into the fruit. And then you'd leave that, uh, the fruit and the whiskey, to macerate for about, at the very least, an hour, and you could give it a couple of hours if you had the time. Or you could even, if it suited you better, you could leave the fruit soaking overnight. And I'm using this nice shiny red plastic basin because um, it's nice and wide, it's easy to mix in it, and anyway, lots of households would already have something about this size. So we'll cover that now and leave it aside until you, and I'm going to go ahead and make the actual cake mixture.